Welcome back, I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. Today we're going to take a look at one of the coolest microbrand watches I've seen in quite a while. It's a bit dressy, a little casual, and a whole lot of blue all wrapped up in a square package. This is the Vesuviet Ativo. The Ativo is a Kickstarter watch that is planned to launch in late March, so this is a prototype that was lent into review, and there may be some changes in the final version. Although, as of right now, I only know of one change, and I'll mention that when I get to it. Vesuviet also mentioned that if the Kickstarter is successful, they will send me a production model later on, hence that promotional tag at the beginning. Now, the Ativo gets a lot of things right here, yet there are still a few aspects that it kind of stumbles on. But if you like watches that are a little bit different, this is one to keep an eye on. So we're looking at a 39mm wide watch without, and just over 46mm with the crown. And since it is square, you're also looking at a lug to lug just over 46 as well. Now because of that square shape, that 39mm width can be a bit deceiving, as it wears a bit larger than your typical 39. In fact, I'd say it wears closer to a 42, maybe even a 43, albeit one with a fairly short lug to lug. It also has a massive amount of presence for its size, and that's all thanks to the gorgeous crystal and the dial that stretches across the entire thing. And once again, I think visually it looks closer to a 42 than a 39. Now considering the rather tall crystal the Ativo has, it's relatively thin at 11mm, which may be in part to the thinner Miyota 9015 movement it uses. I'm also really glad to see Vesuviet gave this both a screw down crown and 100 meters of water resistance. So while it might look a little dressy, it has those sports watch characteristics to go and do whatever you need it to do. Along the same lines, it also has an extra heat treatment to harden the case for extra scratch resistance. The one controversial element here is the use of an integrated bracelet, which I have to admit looks great with the watch, but I do have a few issues with it I'll address at the end. Now, as this is a squarish case, the four far corners have a sharper rider angle, and that's both on the bottom and the top of the case where there's sort of that little platform before you hit the bezel. Now, this is nothing I felt while wearing it, just kind of when handling and examining it for the review. The rest of the watch is rather nice and smooth. The finish is a mixture of both brushed and polished surfaces, which you might expect in a watch like this. The sides and the bezel have a mirror-like polish, while the top has this linear brushing it kind of blends seamlessly into the edges of the bracelet. It's a pretty interesting design. When you look at the watch from the top down, you see that those brush edges of the bracelet lead up to a larger platform. Meanwhile, the polished sections of that bracelet kind of form a light catching pathway that leads to the bezel, and that all frames the sunburst dial. Whereas when you look at the watch from the side, you see these multiple steps of reflective surfaces that then lead up to the top of the domed sapphire. And I really love how the curvature of the crystal pairs up with that of the bezel. Now, it wasn't too long ago that I reviewed the Iridium Torpedo, and in that review, in the comments, there was some discussion about how distortion plays with the design. Now, everyone's preferences are going to be a little bit different, but I think the Ativo is a great example of what I like, where when you're looking straight down at the watch, everything is crystal clear. Yet as you turn it, the distortion becomes more and more pronounced. And here I love how it starts to magnify the indices and the chaptering, and I think that really enhances the sense of depth with the watch. It's really well done. So moving to the rear, we have an exhibition case spec with a linear brushing that matches the watch. And with that, you can see that the prototype uses a standard Miyota 9015. Now, the one change that I know about will be switching that to a gilted version, which should look a little bit nicer, although it should be complete with the same custom rotor. Back to the front and at the right, we have these sort of stubby little crown guards, which doesn't cover up much of the signed screw down crown. The crown itself is a good size, and it's always easy to unscrew and use. On its own, I think it would look a little out of place with this case, yet those stubby little crown guards give it a place to rest, and I think help it integrate nicely into the overall case design. One thing I noticed with this design is that there's this sort of contrast in geometries. While there is a slight curvature to the various angles on the side of the case and the bracelet, for the most part it's pretty blocky. Yet once you get to the dial of the Ativo, it's a whole other story, and the dial here really is the star of the show. From the look of things, there are going to be six different colorways, with a couple of unusual choices thrown in. Now this of course is the Blue Depths version, 
which has this gorgeous sunburst cobalt blue dial, which stretches across the entire square case. The indices are applied squares, with a silver metallic frame that is then filled with white luminous paint. While the indices aren't very tall, the slight distortion from the crystal gives the entire watch a greater sense of depth. Taking up most of the outer edge of the dial is a singular circular track, which combines both of those indicators with a painted chapter ring, which gives the watch a very clean and mostly uncluttered design. Just look at the center of the watch. It's wide and expansive, with only a small part of that real estate used for the logo at the top and some text at the bottom. While the blue backdrop also stretches to fill the corners of the square case, which gives the Ativo an impressive amount of presence for its size. At the four cardinal points, you have these stubbier indicators, which winds up creating kind of this inverse crosshair effect. But more importantly, it shows that the design uses space and case shape to its advantage. At those positions, there isn't enough room for a full-sized index, as it's already pretty close to the side of the case. But as the space opens up with that square shape, the indices stretch out a bit. Now, one consequence of using a square shape is that the hands always have a tendency to look short, even if they aren't. And specifically with the Ativo, the hour hand is a little bit short, but the minute and second hand aren't. The minute hand goes halfway through the shorter indices, and the lollipop goes just to the outer edge of them, so they couldn't be much longer. The Ativo really is a breathtaking watch to look at, but I think some people are going to be divided on the design. If you're someone that likes a really clean, straightforward look, well, here you go. But I think for some, that expansive center section will start to look a little too empty the more you stare at it. And that's kind of where I fall into all of this. Because of that wide open area, I think the date at the three disrupts the symmetry and flow of the dial more than it usually would. As well as I think it exasperates the shorter looking hands, as they kind of seem lost in a sea of blue. Although I do love the red second hand for just a touch of color. Now I know the hands can't really be longer, but I would be curious to see if they could be a little bit wider. I mean, just to fill in a little bit more of that empty space. Now, nothing is ever perfect, and I wouldn't call any of that a deal killer in any way. In fact, overall, I really like this watch. It's a pretty well thought out and well executed design, and I especially love how different it is from a lot of the other microbrand offerings out there. But even beyond the aesthetics, it's a highly functional watch as well. The silver and white against the dark blue offer a ton of contrast, so it's easy to read and use. But let's move on to the loom. And I really like that they used a blue BGW9 as it looks great with the blue dial. It's initially very bright, and overall I think it's going to be good enough for a casual sports watch. Yet, I would like it if it was a little bit better. For a comparison test, I actually had this up against a variety of watches. The hands here lasted a little bit longer than a Vostok Amphibia, but not much. While the dial had a little bit more staying power, but it's not really useful without the hands. So I think a little bit more loom here would be nice. And this is another area that maybe making those hands wider would help, as it does give you more surface area to put loom. But overall, I think it's going to be good enough for the type of watch it's trying to be. So as for the movement, Vesuviet wisely decided to go with the Miyota 9015, as that shorter movement is one way that they were able to keep the height down. Now I've talked about it before in other videos, but I am becoming a fan of the 9015. It's a high beat, 42 hour power reserve, hacking, and hand winding. It's really a nice step up from your standard Seiko NH35, and kind of sits right in the middle in terms of price between that and Swiss alternatives. Now up to this point, I think you can tell I like the Ativo, but the bracelet is where my opinion starts to turn a bit. And as the bracelet is sort of integrated, that matters here more than some other watches. And I say sort of integrated because it does have a lug, but the lug width is only 16 millimeters. So they kind of made this hybrid integrated regular sort of setup. Now, first off, I think the design looks absolutely fantastic. It's a little bit retro, a little modern, and the design blends together seamlessly with the case. Plus, it has a great build quality, solid end links, solid links, and a nice milled push-button butterfly clasp. However, I do have a few issues with it. The first of which is that the edges are a little sharp, and especially on the inside of the bracelet next to your wrist, which you might expect just by looking at its square shape, but it is something that you occasionally feel while wearing it. 
But the last issue I have is probably the biggest, as it really ties into comfort while wearing it. I think the watch head itself is fine, but I find the bracelet pretty constricting. As the bracelet is sorta of integrated, the first link starts out at 24 millimeters, and then it only tapers down to 22 at the clasp. So compared to what I normally wear, it just feels a lot wider and just more constricting. Then doubling the problem is the butterfly clasp itself. On all of my other watches with a butterfly clasp, the clasp is usually an 18 or 20 millimeter. And even with that, I always find them a little bit awkward. The clasp always pushes against the bottom of your wrist. And here, 22 millimeters is a pretty big butterfly clasp to have against your wrist. So as much as I love the way this watch looks with that bracelet, I just don't find it as comfortable to wear as other watches I've worn. Now, over time, I think you could get used to it, but it is a question on whether or not you want to. Although, since this is a Kickstarter, there is the possibility that they could change this before moving forward. Maybe they could reduce the overall width, or maybe taper it down to 20 millimeters at the clasp. Or maybe even offer some other options. I know at one point they mentioned a custom leather strap. So in terms of value, the Kickstarter price here is going to be $350. Over the last year, it seems like most watches with the Miyota 9015 kind of start at $400 to $500. So considering everything you're getting here, $350 is pretty good. And especially so for something with a bit of a different design. Overall, I like the Ativo, and I like what they're trying to do. I just wish that it was a little bit more comfortable to wear with its bracelet. Now, maybe they can do something with that moving forward, but as it is right now, I think it's only going to be for those that like watches with a larger bracelet, which is kind of weird to say on a watch that's only 39mm wide. So, if that sounds like you, and you are looking for something really different, then this could be right up your alley. As for everyone else, well, let me know down below what you think about the Vesuvia Dativo, or if you can think of any other square watches I should take a look at. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.